Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners. This is Comeza Radio Africa, the voice of Comeza, the organization everybody wants to be associated with. The mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. That is our philosophy. We inform and entertain. We develop and educate. We empower and support. We associate and network. That is the idea. We are a business and professional management services 24-7 internet streaming radio station broadcasting 50% of music and 50% talk shows. Our talk shows aim to affirm and support business professionals and entrepreneurs in their personal and professional journey to bring difference to the world. The objective is to use the African storytelling and the Lohotla conversation methodology in offering career coaching, education and learning guidance, continuous professional development, enterprise and entrepreneurship development, and connecting supply and demand. My name is Sam Zima. I am the CEO and the Executive Business Coach at Comesa GOC International. You are welcome to take up membership with our NPO, Comesa Friends and Supporters Club, NPO, and you may do that online at www.comesaclub.africa. And you are also welcome to send us email at callcenter.comesa-goc.com. We are honored to have with us at this moment as our guest, Mercy Pokazi Machigiza. Did I say it well? Yes, you did, Sam. Uh, greeting, Sam, and to the listeners. Lovely. It's such a pleasure to have you uh, with us this moment. Thank you. I'm honored to be with you. Great. Um, I'm going to, 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 to disclose that uh, the profession that you are in is one of the professions that I attempted some earlier years in my professional uh, journey. Really? And uh, I only spent one year in that course, pharmacy, be farm. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Why didn't you see through? <laughs> you know, it's one of those classical examples of what happens when the career guidance is not really well structured. Uh, nobody did tell me that there's no way that you can pass B pharmacy if you have not done physical science in high school. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, it was torture. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. It's physical science and biology. Yes, you have yes to I had the good marks in biology. I had biological and mathematics, but when it came to physical science, it was blank. I mean, I just struggled to understand the table of elements, you know, the basic of the basics. Oh, yeah. Then we, yeah, think, we don't really go that much into physics. It's more like biology. Yes. More than physics. Yes. But I'm glad to meet somebody that has cracked it and is in it. We, we're going to hear more about how the journey was and how you chose this career. Definitely. Lovely. You are... You are joining me from where now? Which part of the country are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Embalentle, uh, Secunda. This, uh, that's in Pumalanga. Oh, yes, just next to Sasol, the, the plant. Yes, we've, we've got the biggest Sasol plant here, uh, Sasol Secunda. Oh, lovely. I, I'm, I'm honored to have you and thank you for accepting the invitation to become my conversation partner. I, I wouldn't like to call it an interview. We are in conversation uh, using our stories and applying the Lohotla methodology of giving each other space to tell our story. I'm just your partner today. Yes, thanks for having me, Sam. 
So tell us a little bit more about you. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? And what did you grow up doing? Okay, I was born in a small village called Kwekweni location that is in Enobo in the Eastern Cape. That's where I was born. That's where I studied for uh, the junior secondary school. And then I went to high school in East London. Uh, so that's where I grew up. Wow. And were you just deciding on yourself or did the parents say, we love our daughter, she needs to get the best education and therefore we're going to make sure that she goes to the best schools? Uh, they decided and I think I partly decided, but mostly I think the universe just chose the path for me because uh, when I went to study pharmacy, I didn't know what pharmacy was. I learned on the job. Isn't that a common story for many of us in South Africa or in Africa? I think it's a common story. It was more a phone the bursary. Well, they said it was a bursary for pharmacy, physiotherapy. Then I thought, okay, pharmacy sounds nice. I didn't really know what pharmacy was. Then when I was studying it, then I, I fell in love with it. It was really what I wanted to do. Wow. We're going to come back to that. I just want to get to know you a little better. Uh, Obviously, you, you were born in that small village, and yes. the, that village exposed you to life. Yes, it did. And how was it? Growing up in a small village, it was nice. You learned so much about the families of Ubuntu, because it's like every mother, every father is your parent. Mm. So it's a small village. Uh, you're just accountable to everybody, and you have no choice but to behave yourself, because everybody is Yes. And and who did you grow up with? Did you have siblings, cousins, brothers? I mean, I mean... Yeah, yeah everyone. I come from a family of five. I'm the second born of, of five siblings. So I grew up surrounded by my siblings, my cousins. I grew up with my grandfather and my grandmother, my mom and my dad, my uncles, my aunts. It was, it was full house. It was everybody. Mm, the typical African way, you know. The typical African way. You had, you had almost like, a, I don't know in the Eastern Cape, I know that uh, it's different to my, my Skukune region where we build a lapa, and inside the lapa, every one of us has his own room and we assemble in the common fireplace. Was it that the same way? Yeah, it was the same way. It was the same way. It was the house like a big yard with a lot of houses inside. Mm. And then there was a main house where my grandfather and my grandfather stayed. And that's where we used to go for the evening prayer before we went to our rooms and our different houses within wow. the same yard. So you come from a, 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 a Christian or religious family? Yes, my parents and my grandparents are Methodist. So wow. I grew up in a Methodist home. Yes, yes. Wow, that's beautiful. And uh, so, so are, are your parents uh, uh, still alive? Uh, my mom is still alive. She's 62. My mm. dad passed away sadly in the year 2000. Mm. Mm. But were they, were they working or were they, were they living communal life? Uh, my mom is a teacher, a retired teacher. She retired two years ago. My dad was working at a magistrate's office. Wow. Okay. So in in our in our situation in South Africa, we will say that it was a pretty well well uh, established financially or commercially or how do you put it. So they were they, they were they were not that struggle that is common for so many of us in terms of of uh, affordability of life. Yeah. Yes. We were okay. We we didn't really struggle. We could we could uh, manage the day to day thing. Mm, mm, mm. Are you still in touch with your hometown or home village? Uh, yes, I do go home every now and again, even though it's very far now. The driving is almost 10 hours. Okay, flying is an hour and a half. Then you mm. have to take a car from the airport and then it takes you about two hours to get home from the airport. Mm, mm. Those are deep rural parts of the Eastern Cape, man. Yes, it's very rural. We only saw tar roads, I think maybe probably about five years ago. Mm. Mm. The so M2, was that the M2? Say again? Was that the M2? Uh, it's 
part of the entries. Mm, mm. Yeah, you know, you know why I'm asking this detailed background is South Africa is very big in the in terms of land mass, and 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 some of the people who might not have been there when you say rural, uh, if you live in Houting, rural maybe is uh, Magali's uh, back or you know what I mean. Oh yeah, it's so so rural it's very educational for people to understand when we say rural, we really mean another world. And that's where we all come from uh, to become who we are. Yes, that's true. No, that's deep rural where we struggled with water, we struggled with electricity. We only saw the TV. I think probably for me, I was 13. That's the first time I saw the television. Mm, mm. But look at the turnaround. You are just then to become an urbanite a, 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 a citizen. Yes. Mm. Wonderful. It, 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 uh, I remember my days living from the rural, living rural areas to come and study in Gauteng. I mean, the amount of shock you go through, even though you keep it to yourself because you want to show that you are in control. By the time you finish six six months at the university, you have been in you have been in the darkness. You have been wondering what's happening, and and by the time you start understanding what you are studying, it's too late. Yes. <laughs> That's what happened to me with my first year. I, I struggled with the English language. I, st I struggled with the curriculum. It was too many struggles. Mm, mm, mm. It's very hard. But anyway, that's the story of our country and of our continent. Uh, nothing is impossible, but I think uh, that's why we want to share these stories. Now, uh, how did you do uh, in your in your high schools? Uh, was it? Did you produce good grades? I guess it could only be good grades if you studied pharmacy. pharmacy. Yes, I tried my best. I was, I was an A student up until matric. I passed my matric with an exemption. I needed it to be accepted for for the bachelor of pharmacy. Mm. So yeah, I was a dedicated student. I really worked hard. Mm. Mm. And, and 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 you are grateful for that now that you are able to practice your profession, and 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 where did you go and do your 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 your, your university studies? I went to the University of the Western Cape. That's in Belleville, Cape Town. Yes. Yeah, that was between the year two thousand until two thousand and three. Mm. Why and the Why the University of the Western Cape? Uh, because my older sister was already there, she was studying at Peninsula Technicon. So when I needed uh, university acceptance, uh, she tried applying for me at the University of the Western Cape because mm. it was closest to her. Mm. It's, it's always good to have the elder sisters and brothers, you know, uh, moving ahead and you, you follow their guidelines. Yes, and paving the way because it makes it easier because I can't imagine my life by myself so far away from home. Mm, mm, mm. What do you think happens to those who are not lucky like you to have elder sisters and brothers? Shouldn't, shouldn't be one of the priorities of many villages and schools that will come out? That people um, don't get left out just because they have no people to guide them from their families. Yes, that's true. I think that's why there's things like career guidance. You know, people go to the schools and they guide the people who are still at high school and they tell them about these careers. Mm, mm, mm. It's yeah. very important. And and so so you 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 got accepted and then you arrive at the, on campus. How was the, the arrival on campus? It was very scary because you're just this rural girl who's just coming to this big city. You don't know anyone apart from my sister who was there and at a different technicon. So it was quite scary, but uh, I adjusted. You make friends and you get people who are actually there to guide you, like the house committee members. Mm. They're very helpful. Mm. Were you accommodated at the university residence? Uh, yes, I was actually lucky to get um, accommodation within, I think, one week of being there. Mm. But it was the whole queuing. You go to the house committee, you queue every day, they shot this queue until you you are placed. Mm. Mm. And of course, you have to make yourself uh, um, 
very sad there and, and tell them that, okay, you come from far, you can go back to Angle, where you've got all your suitcases. So every day you will just go there and basically cry. Mm, mm. And so they feel sorry for you and then they place you. Oh, man. That was the beginning of life. That was the beginning of life, yes. Mm. Were you lucky to get any scholarship? Yes, actually, on my second year, I got a scholarship from this organization. It was called MESA, uh, Medical Education for South African Blacks. Wow. Wait, that's such an organization. So I'm not sure if it still exists now, but mm. it existed then, and they gave mm. me full scholarship from my second year right up to my final year. Mm. With the hope that you will not disappoint them. If you were to fail, then they will withdraw it. I think so, yes. I didn't even want to take chances, but I think that was the condition. <laughs> <laughs> that the, otherwise, you get a one way ticket back to Ingmobo. <laughs> That's right, no. When I'm coming there, it's this biggest failure just tasted Cape Town for a week or for one day. <laughs> yeah. 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 I couldn't risk that. Mm, we, we always want also on this platform to to acknowledge the teachers that uh, took us through in our early years of learning to become scholars. Uh, mm. We can't recognize all of them, but any teachers that stand out for you during your high schools that really played a key role in your development, either directly or indirectly? Yes, the first teacher is my mother. Actually, she taught me uh, Sabi. Thank wow. you great too now. Yes. Wow. So she was my sub teacher. Wow, wow. That's beautiful. So so that you had no choice but to do well because otherwise things follow you to home. Eh? Yeah, it follows you everywhere. <laughs> and she was actually very strict at school because I think she wanted to make an example out of me and she wanted the other children not to think she had favorites. Mm, mm, so she was mm. very, very tough with me and I had no choice but to well, mm, mm. but how how were the other girl children in the village? I mean, you you come out of the family of teacher and, and I guess uh, educated parents, but I'm sure it wasn't the case with everybody. Girl children specifically. When I mean, do you have quite a number of those who also continued with their education? Uh, no, I don't think it was everybody who continued. I think the influence that I had in my family really healthy because my grandfather was a school principal my grandmother was also a school principal at another school mm -hmm. my mom is a teacher some of my aunts are also teachers mm -hmm. so coming from that environment where education was important did mold me and my siblings to want to also pursue that same path of, of education mm -hmm. but I don't think other people were not uh, raised in the same household they, they really didn't follow that because they had no person to look up to or no footsteps to follow in. Mm, mm, mm. And so I hear you said that uh, you didn't even know what pharmacy was. You, mm. At what point did you be, decide? Was it after you had arrived on campus or was it before you arrived on campus? It was after I had arrived. At, at campus, because the story was after I passed on the trick, my mother told me she couldn't afford to take me and my older sister to tertiary at the same time. Mm. So I think by the grace of God, uh, we saw a bursary on, uh, that was advertised in some newspaper in the Eastern Cape. Mm. It was the Department of Health, um, Eastern Cape. They wanted to sponsor matriculants to go and study. I think it was pharmacy. Uh, physiotherapy, optometry, and dentistry. Mm. Mm. So then I applied for that nursery. And I think the one thing that sounded nice for me was pharmacy. Mm. I didn't know what it was. I just liked how it sounded. <laughs> <laughs> so I applied for pharmacy. And then uh, at our university, the first year, we all took PSC. Whether you want to do dentistry or pharmacy mm. or physiotherapy, we all start with PSC 1. I see. And then within that year, then that's when I started learning what pharmacy was. And then I knew that, okay, I made the right choice. That was what I wanted to study. Mm, mm, mm. Did they tell you that you were going to be mixing drugs? 
Oh, they didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really know. I only found that out, I think, on my fourth year. That's when you actually focus now on, on pharmacy as a career. Yeah. Because before that, it's your anatomy, it's your um, physics, pharmacology. But fourth year, then you focus now on pharmacy. That's yeah. when you know what it they, is. They say to you, now you have studied the body, body parts, you understand the human being. Now we are going to teach you how to solve the problems of this body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I drag in the people in here. <laughs> because if you study biology, I mean, it's a beautiful subject. You know, they tell you yeah. about the, all these processes, the respiratory systems, the digestive system, and the, they, are, they are look very glamorous stuff, you know, to know. Yes. Until you face the reality. <laughs> Uh, you can't reality. prescribe a wrong drug. You go to jail. You go to jail, that's the thing. <laughs> and now people these days, they even Google the thing. So when you give them, they already on their phone, they're Googling exactly what you're giving them. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. And we, one of the objective of this platform, as we tell our stories, over and above us wanting to acknowledge you, you know, I, I'm passionate about people in our society who have identified a particular profession and they've perfected it and we look up to them as specialists. And I'm sure you've seen how grateful we have been with the, the team that advises our government on coronavirus. You can only appreciate that. Please. So, doing so, a very good job. Yeah. So we want to acknowledge professional people because, uh, because they're really critical for us. But... We also want to use our stories to inspire those who are still there, wondering what next, what am I going to be doing? And that's why we want to go deeper in, in sharing these stages of our growth, and that way we can enlighten others. So I, 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 I want us, to, when we come back from a break, to really dissect B pharmacy into its little details and, and also the life of a bee pharmacy student on campus and, and what you have got to go through, what type of subjects you took. Because it's a journey, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a journey. And only you, only you can tell it better than a, a career guidance teacher. Yes, that's true, because that's my life. That's what I'm living. Uh, that's what I went through. Absolutely. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want us to spend a little bit of time on your tertiary level education and learning and development journey that you followed. Okay. We'll be back. <laughs> 